check, 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 one, two. Let me just make sure my audio is good. All right, I just literally been running around these past few, this past few hours actually, trying to get some stuff situated. All right, sounds like I'm good here. All right. Let me just get kind of like fixing up my my workstation here. So trying to get you can't really see it here, but right here, right next to me, I have a table of just wires and wires. Trying to get everything good. All right. Looks like we're good. All right. So, so far, I'm working on, this is like the battle station right here. It's like all my computer, everything I need for digitizing, for business side, marketing, everything is going to be done in this uh, room that I'm inside right here. So I got all my uh, paperwork, computer stuff, hard drive stuff. All right. So this is kind of like my, uh, my. Uh, battle station zone where I'm going to have all my stuff situated. So it's kind of like a work in progress. All right. So I got the pegboard here set up by this week. I should have everything already hooked up. I got the mighty hoops ready to go. So before I, I had them kind of like in a, um, in a bin, right. But if you have them in a bin, a lot of times you forget about certain mighty hoops. Okay. So like that, once they're up, you kind of have visual on where everything's at. So I like to have everything um, very organized in its place. And the best way to organize for me is to have them up on top of the walls. All right. So it's a lot of it's like a big game saver. Saves a lot of space right here. All right. So, of course, today, January 1st, Happy New Year's, everybody. I'm super excited to be here today. All right. When I'm here live doing embroidery classes, I feel like I'm at home. I feel like I'm 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 where I'm supposed to be at. All right. So I am super excited to bring back our weekly live classes because it's something about being live, teaching embroidery. All right. That that interaction that we have. All right. That you can't really get it anywhere else. OK, and plus being live while I'm digitizing. So let me see. So this is our file for today. All right. We got Tommy Trojan here. And the reason why I picked this one, because there's so there's so much kind of like little details that we can learn from this image right here. OK, I didn't want to just get text by itself or like a simple uh, shape. OK. Here we have different shapes, different stuff happening. All right. And what best way to start the year? Okay. And to go into uh, kind of the details of embroidery. All right. Because when we look at images, there's like a thousand ways to do certain stuff. Okay. Um, I like to focus, especially this year. Okay. This year, I'm going to go heavy, 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 heavy on the art side, on the digitizing side of embroidery, okay? And the reason why I really wanna go heavy on the art side and the digitizing, because even though it's easy, all right, it's very easy to run a business and not ever touch designs, not even have a clue how designs are even created, okay? But it's very, very helpful, it's very useful because if something happens, let's say something doesn't look right, you, you take it off the embroider machine and you know something doesn't look right. Like your eye doesn't lie to you. And a lot of times your customer, sometimes you might say the customer, they won't even notice, okay? Customers are smarter than what we think they are, okay? So a lot of times people are like, hey, don't worry about it. That's only embroiderers who, who, who notice that, okay? Believe it or not, the eye, Okay, the eye is looking for symmetry. It's making sure everything is in order. And as soon as a, a one thread is out of place, okay, the eye detects that, tells the brain, and the customer is like, hey, something doesn't look right. Okay, so a lot of times 
if we don't understand digitizing, if we don't understand why certain stuff is happening, we might be blaming the wrong thing. Okay, we might be blaming the machine. That's probably like 90% of the time, right? In every group, you'll see people blaming their machine. Hey, this machine, uh, it's not working, this, this, and that, okay? You might be um, blaming the fabric. You might be blaming, you know, you might be blaming so many things, but a lot of times it's like one little simple detail in the design. So if we understand, okay, if we understand why certain things happen or the way they're supposed to be, Okay, and there are certain rules in, in embroidery. Okay, there are certain rules, but there's no such thing as rock solid. You have to do it this way. Okay, everything is opinionated based. Um, every designer, digitizer, they have their own style. They have their own way of doing stuff. All right, so looks like we got a packed house today. Uh, one thing that I want to do this year, okay, uh, one big thing that I want to start doing is uh, you could drop drop your questions in the comments. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back as soon as we get kind of like a uh, stopping point. I want to go back. I want to answer questions. Now, one big thing, especially I think I really noticed it this past year. Is there are certain there are certain questions that cannot be answered with a yes or no or like in a one or two sentence answer. Okay, so sometimes I do get emails asking very, very good questions. And sometimes I either need to show it, right? I need to show it like in real time, either in the embroidery machine or in the software. Or I might not know the answer, but I have to go ask somebody else, right? Somebody that specializes in certain items. Okay, uh, what I want to do this year is a lot of the questions. I'm going to go back after after we're done tonight. I'm going to go back. I'm going to write down a lot of the questions that I didn't get to, especially like tough questions. All right. I really love, love tough questions, questions where we got to kind of dig in and, and to really get an answer. So what I want to do is uh, write down a lot of these questions and make videos answering the question, all right? So that way, if I need to get on the computer or if I need to get down to an embroidery machine, all right, it's easier for me to show it. Because sometimes, for example, right, just a random example. Let's say somebody has a question about a bobbin, right? It's hard for me to write down in a sentence exactly what I'm talking about in a bobbin. It's easier for me to like have a bobbin in hand, right? I got bobbins right here. It's easier for me to have a bobbin in hand and kind of point at it and be like, hey, this here, this is what we're talking about right here, right? Just kind of, all right, so if you do have questions, all right, leave it down below. All right, once again, so this year, okay, we're doing our classes Monday night, Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern time. So kind of towards the evening, all right, for me, Mondays is like the best day of the week for me, all right? I'm kind of like the opposite from, right? Like 99% of the world, 99% of the world, they hate Mondays, right? They hate coming in at work on Mondays and they're like, you know, all tired. And, you know, for me, that's, that's game time because that's fresh projects, fresh customers coming in. All right. So for me, I'm, I'm, I'm working my best, like my, my brain is at its best from the whole week on Monday. All right, so Monday, and then that gives me, if I'm doing any type of projects, that gives me time uh, Saturday or Sunday to kind of take my time if I'm presenting any information. All right. All right, so I'm going to definitely get, I see we got a jam-packed house today. All right, super pumped for today. All right, uh, I do like this question. MM Customs, where's the Merrill machine? Yep, I got it downstairs, all right? It's like game changer, all right? Merrill machine, it's like super game changer. Um, a lot of new equipment that I got and I'm I'm learning a lot of this new equipment, all right? One thing I don't wanna do is start uh, presenting information and not being ready, all right? Or not not being at 100. So right now, post, mach uh, post bed machine, which I'm having a blast. I'm having so much fun working with the post bed. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm putting um, 
Velcro on hats, all right? So that's the big one. And then with the Merrill machine, uh, putting Velcro on the patches, all right? And that's like our big thing for this year right here, all right? But definitely start hitting that up, okay? L later towards the week in this embroidery class. All right, good. Uh, usually I'm saying like good morning, but today's good afternoon. All right, we got a, a lot of happy New Year's. All right, I do want to get started. Let me see, we're already 10 minutes in. All right, so I do appreciate everybody being here today. All right, bam, bam, bam. Uh, let me just see if I got some quick questions right here. Ruben, how you doing? Uh, so the Mighty Who's behind me, these are the, these pegboards are um, the ones behind me, uh, the Mighty Who. Those are the Ikea ones, all right? And then the ones here on my right where I'm gonna load it up with all my threads, okay? Right now I just got like 10% uh, probably of my threads, all right? We're about to load it up. This one is uh, the regular pegboards from like Home Depot, okay? So you, you kind of have more control with this one right here, all right? All right, so happy new year, bam, bam, yep. All right, so we got everybody in the house. Uh, all right, a lot of familiar faces. All right, uh, I do want to get started, but I am seeing a lot of familiar faces. Nice to see everybody. All right, bam, bam. Yes, let me start with announcements. All right, let's start we'll just with some quick, quick announcements. All right, uh, first thing first. Uh, what, in two weeks, we have uh, Long Beach impression shows. So if you are, if you're kind of like, um, if you don't know about the impression show, right, it's probably like the biggest uh, show in all of the world, right? I want to say the world, there are probably like two or three other big ones that could compete with it. But really, I'm going to say it's like the biggest show in the world with anything with, especially embroidery, right, especially embroidery, but there is other stuff. Uh, screen printing, DTG, and all that other stuff. Um, so I'm going to be there on that Saturday, okay, that Saturday. So I'm actually working Friday, all the way through Friday night. I get out Saturday morning. As soon as I get out, like the doors open on me, I'm, I'm, I'm driving from San Diego to Long Beach, all right? So I'll be there Saturday morning, that Saturday morning, and pretty much my goal there is to really talk to all the companies that's um, embroidery related, all right? Bring all that information to the channel and present all that information, all right? So look out for those. I know a lot of people, uh, if you're East Coast, Midwest, can't make it there, okay? Um, a lot, a lot of good companies there. Uh, a lot of good information. If you are West Coast or you can travel, all right? Highly recommend you, you go to that show. Okay, there's no if, ands, or buts. It's like a must. All right. Um, I'll, I'll actually make a video and talk about the companies that are going to be there, companies that I'm excited to talk to and actually, you know, have one on one conversations with those companies. Because really, that's the big thing there. All right. You're talking to these companies face to face and you're there with like any questions. If you have questions about certain items, okay, because you can go, you can do research all year long. But nothing beats actually being in front of equipment, talking to people, all right, and getting phone numbers and contact information, all right. It's like, it's it's good networking, good information out there, all right. Um, another uh, announcement, all right. Uh, FYI, uh, Mighty Hoops, all right, very useful, um, probably the best, right? Easily the best, not probably. It's easily the best hooping efficiency you can have out there all right if you want to purchase mighty hoops okay i got a free shipping code look at check for it in the description all right um it really saves uh it really starts saving right especially shipping when you add up shipping at the end of the year all right i don't know about you guys but right now i'm kind of doing my taxes and all that and you see with like every everything that you save no let me reword that everything that you expense right everything that you pay for you really see it in writing when you're doing your tax right so shipping all right big a big expense if you're running a small business or any type of business all right so we got the free shipping code uh for your mighty hoops all right uh, 
All right, I think I'm ready to go right here. All right. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm in custom candle thread. Yep. So candle thread. All right. Um, you see it right here. These are all candle thread right here. It has like a, a, a certain shine that I really like. Okay. Really makes design stand out, especially we do a lot of 3D puff. Okay. Makes my 3D puff. Actually, let me, let me. Let me show my so this is from that last video that i did the, like the short video all right see all right yeah so to answer this question love love candle thread all right also have uh, the candle thread link in the description all right and then let me see i did see that question right here all right i'll get back to questions right here all right. Uh, East Coast has Firefighter Mike. What's up? East Coast has impression showing Atlantic. Yeah, I went to the Atlantic one last year. All right. It's good. It's real good. All right. But the Long Beach one. All right. That's like the big, big one. All right. But definitely if you're on East Coast, the Atlantic, the Atlantic show. All right. And then this one. Let me let me do this announcement right here. Right. The book. Right. The book. Uh, so like how I said it in the in one of my last videos. Uh, the book is pretty much like 95% done, okay? But I put a pause on it because I want it better, okay? I want it better. There's certain there's certain items that I feel like it's missing, okay? So just give me some time to kind of add more stuff to it, all right? It's just getting better, all right? It's already good. It's good. It's ready to go. It's going to be better, all right? So I want to take my time, especially this being my first book, all right? I don't want to rush anything. I want to just... Uh, especially doing these classes, I'm doing, I'm putting out more information. All right. So the book is coming. I'm not going to put a due date the next time I talk about it. All right. I'm going to have it ready in on hand. All right. All right. Thank you for that question. William Rhodes. All right. Let's get this party started right here because I am super pumped up to get this one here. All right. So today's episode. Okay, how to turn a JPEG to embroidery. All right, so a lot of times this is the big question, right? I wish there was a, I wish there was a button, okay, that actually worked, okay? I wish there was a button that actually worked that you could just say, hey, send to embroidery machine, okay? You get a picture, customer, right? Because a lot of times that's what customers think that we do. Customers think that all they do is send us a picture, and bam, it's it, this this thing is ready to go. All right, it's not the case. A lot, a lot of small details that gotta get taken care of, right? So as soon as our customer sends us the picture, right? There's probably like 20 questions we need to ask this customer. Okay. For example, first question, right? First question before we even start clicking buttons. All right. It is. What is it? It is. What size? What size? is what size do you want it, right? I bet you 99% of the time, they don't have an exact size for you. Like they don't know, okay? They're gonna probably use, they're probably gonna ask you what size do you think would look good, okay? That's probably 99% of the time. If somebody comes to me and tells me, oh, I want it at 2.3 inches in height, all right? I, like they'll kind of catch me off guard like, oh, right? They probably done this before. Okay, so usually the first question is always, uh, what size? So a lot of times, if we don't know the rules, right, of embroidery, uh, we might either not know how to answer that question or we might give them bad information. All right, so size, it all depends uh, how us staying within the rules of embroidery, all right? For example, all right, for example, and yes, I know there are, there is the auto digitizing, right? But that's just there for, you know, marketing purposes. All right. Ain't no such thing as um ain't no such thing as auto digitizing. All right. All right, unlock. Let me unlock this. All right. So first thing we do, right? We check the size. So right here, I'm I'm digitizing Tommy Trojan here. Uh two inches height. Okay. This is like my sweet zone, sweet spot that I like. Okay, it's it's it is 
hat friendly, beanie friendly, pol uh, polo friendly. Okay. All right. So we know our height. Usually we should just, usually I'm looking more um, height wise. All right. Height wise. Uh, hats are wide width. We're more worried about how wide is it? Like, is it gonna pass our hat? So let me show you right here. So height, right? Let's talk about hats. Um, on a hat, we know 2.5, that's kind of like the sweet spot, or that's kind of like a uh, red zone, right? Above 2.5, okay? Even though you could go 3.25, you could go higher, but you're kind of like in the red zone, right? Usually 2.5, a real big sweet spot, 2.25, all right? You say 2.25, nobody's struggling. Your machine's not struggling, stretching caps, okay? Um, so high-wise. Width-wise, right, we should know what 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 width we want to go with, right? Usually 5.6 um, width on the length on the width, okay? Unless you want to be like super all the way to the sides. So you should have an understanding of what what size do you play in? Okay, what 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 do you embroider? What well, what products do you like to embroider? So you should have like your sweet size, your sizes that you like. Polo shirt, right? You don't want it too too wide because what's going to happen? You're going to start going over here on the sleeve, or right because you're kind of um stuck if you're doing polo shirt you're stuck in the middle right you can't you can't push that way or else you'll be on the buttons okay so if you're doing polo if you specialize polo you should know what's your sweet spot okay usually um 3.5 3 3.5 and with uh height usually you don't want to be above four or else you're gonna you know you're gonna look like uh, uh you're gonna look like you have a book right here right it's gonna be too big okay so step number one in uh, converting your, your, your JPEGs into embroidery is what know your sizes. Know what's your size. Somebody comes up to you and say, hey, what size should I get? First, what are we stitching on, right? That's, that's number one. Know what you like, all right? Know what you like. Everybody has their own sweet spot that they like to work with. That's why me, I like to work with hats, polos, beanies, because they're small, right? They're small. They're not big. All right. All right. Let's go back to our picture. All right. Hold on. My computer looked like it froze. All right. So while I shake it up a bit, let me see if I got any questions here. Bam, bam. All right. Bam. Oh, give me one second. All right, let's talk about this one right here. Um, so let me answer this question. This is a good one. Um, so this question is uh, city time date in Long Beach. So that's um for the impression show. You could you could um you could Google impressions Long Beach impressions Long Beach. I know I'm going to be there the 20th, okay? I got my calendar somewhere here, all right? But yeah, in the convention center of uh, of Long Beach. All right, a lot of shout outs. All right, hold on, I'm just trying to, oh, there we go, back, back on track. All right, sorry about that. Sometimes, you know, my computer stays frozen once in a while. All right, so. What we want to do, okay, what we want to do is look at our maximum heights, okay? So when we're talking about thread, right, sand stitches, these are sand stitches right here, all right? These are sand stitches, okay? Little embroidery 101. This is how a sand stitch looks. What makes it a sand stitch is that it goes from one side all the way to the other side. All right, all the way to the next side, all right, and so forth. So it looks clean. It has those clean lines. Um, our sand stitches, we don't want to go. There's minimums and maximum lengths, okay? Uh, minimums, usually, we don't want to go below 
0.4 millimeters. All right, so here we're at one. All right, H. We don't want to go too small, okay? And sometimes the, the software, it'll protect itself and won't allow you to go below 0.4. All right, so right here, I'm trying to go below 0.4. It's keeping me right here. All right, 4.3. All right. And that's just if once we start getting our, our, our threads too close, our sand stitches too close to each other below 0.4, you have the potential of breaking needle. That's the reason why we don't want to do that. All right. And then the maximum. All right. And there's no like set law, like minimum, maximum, but that's just like general rule. Maximum, uh, you don't want to go above uh, anywhere like seven, 10 millimeters. All right. Can can you go? Yes, you could easily. This is seven point two eight. All right. Uh, just if you're above seven, just know uh, what you're doing. That's all I would say. All right. But you can easily be at seven, eight, nine, ten millimeters. But once you go eleven, twelve millimeters, now you're kind of uh, in the red zone. Just kind of as long as you know what you're doing, okay? Because you can easily go to twelve millimeters. All right. Just know what you're doing. All right. So. With that being said, let's say here, right? Let's say this top part, this top part of the helmet. Let's say we want to shoot a sand stitch all the way down here, right? So we can, it's eight millimeters, right? All the way here, all right? So you can, all right? Let's say, let's see this helmet, damn, eight, all right? So we can. All right, so usually when you're checking out files and they're asking you, hey, can we do this? Can we do that? This is what you're doing. You're measuring. You're kind of seeing what's the limit of it, okay? Now, how would we kind of want to, like a rhetorical question is ask you all, how would you uh, design this image? How would you design this image? And before I answer and start getting into the way I would do it, let me show you this picture right here that I got. Hold on. Let me switch this up for a bit. And then uh, T-Town earlier said, I like 2.3 by 4 inches. All right. So that's kind of like he's saying that that's like his sweet spot for designs. All right. Let me pull up this picture real quick. Um, hat picks. So I found this picture here. All right. And this is from the USC uh, website. All right. Um, bam, right here. Okay. This is like the one of the embroideries that I found from the image that we're digitizing right now. All right. This is how they did it. All right. This is how they did it. All right. Can you can you find can you find any mistakes? This is straight from their website. All right. Like they're actually selling these. All right. They actually look pretty cool. All right. We're super zoomed in so we can see a lot of the imperfections. All right. But if we're looking at this file right here. All right. All right. So one thing that I noticed, look at the whole red. So the whole red in the design, they made it all one fill stitch, all right? One fill stitch. And the reason why they did that, because it's easy, right? You, you put that all in one shot, there's less thinking involved, less planning, less anything, right? You're, you're, it's probably digitizing it faster and it's stitching out faster, all right? But it really doesn't have any dimension. All right, it doesn't really have to mention. And then if I'm looking it at here, you could kind of see where it's bleeding out like this red, the sand stitch, right? It's not covering this one. So you're getting a lot of push pull right here. So I would say there's a lot of imperfections here, right? But they're good with it, right? They're selling it. They're good with it. Up here, we kind of have bleed. We had the fill stitch kind of like bleeding out everywhere, right? You'll be surprised like how many things you would see 
out in the public, right? Like out in the malls and all that. Um, there's a lot of things that is not made perfect, right? But what I want to do, uh, let's close this one. All right. Um, I want to break this design up into pieces. All right. I want to break it up into pieces to have different dimensions, all right? So we're going to have different dimensions. So let me give you an example, all right? Sometimes what I like to do, especially if I have a very complicated design, all right? If I have a complicated design, I'll throw, I'll, I'll vectorize it, but I'll do like a quick Wilcom vectorize it. So let me show you. So I can break this helmet. And if I'm not using like the proper words on some of this, that's fine. All right. Um, all right. So what I can do, bam. I'm just gonna create some lines, and I use these lines to kind of guide me. Bam. All right. So let's say I want to like make, since the design doesn't have designs for me. To, as a guide, okay, I can create my own guides, all right? And then these, I can just convert them into a vector. So here, vic vector outline, all right? I could create these into a vector. So let's go blue, put this, I usually work with 0.10, or if you wanna get them a little thicker, all right? So you could create your own lines. All right, if you want like a kind of a guide. All right, but what I want to do, this hel his helmet right here, I want to break it up into pieces. Okay, I want to break it up into pieces and his face, right? So you see kind of like his jawline right here. I want to break that into pieces. And a lot of times, not every design needs like this much details right here. All right. All right, so you see that? And then we could also turn it into a vector. All right. This is just if you want to um, kind of break up your, your design into pieces. All right, let me lock this guy right there. All right, not necessary, but it helps you kind of visualize and see things a little bit more clear, all right? so. See how we are with time? All right, we're good. All right, so we can start from this bottom, okay? Um, so there's a lot of questions on this design, all right? There's a lot of questions. Um, what I wanna do, okay, what I wanna do, uh, I wanna challenge you and design this file right here, okay? If you want to kind of work this on your own also, okay? Um, I'll challenge you because I bet you 100% for sure, nobody would design this uh, exactly the same way. Like everybody would have their own version because either somebody would start somewhere different, somebody would put, uh, would overlap things differently, okay? There's so many variables in this design as in what goes first, what goes second, uh, what's on top of what, okay? For example, in our design, is the gold below or above our cardinal red right here, okay? So this, this would be like a question right here. Let me hide these vectors, hide, all right? So what's above what? 
uh, do we have the cardinal red on top or do we have the or do we have it below okay or is it some pieces on top and some pieces below all right like his face right his face should be below the shadow okay right the shadow should be on top right of course his nose mouth chin should be on top okay but then we have kind of like a sand stitch coming out from right here all right Bam. all right what i want to do okay i want to before i digitize it okay before i kind of show you how i digitize it uh, let me show you, because I've already digitized this one. Let me show you the final one, because I want to show you a final version. So when I'm digitizing, you could see why I'm doing certain stuff, right? So kind of look at it, and in like 10 seconds, I'll show you the way I digitized it. Okay, so let me give you a second to look at this. Okay, what would you turn? Would you turn anything into a fill stitch? Would you turn anything to a sand stitch? What? What? What would be a sand stitch? So when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the border as a sand stitch. The yellow, the outside yellow, I'm looking at that as a sand stitch. I'm looking at his helmet, the top, right? I'm seeing that as sand stitches, but I'm seeing the shadow of his face as fill stitches. So let me show you right here. Bam, this is my version right here. All right, and I stitched this out already. Actually, I'm going to do a video where I stitch this out. Uh, I'm going to see if my GoPro is working right now. I got the GoPro right here, right next to me. Maybe I could show you the final stitch out. All right, so let's look at it again from here. All right, this is my version, right? It's way different than what the, that uh, slippers that we saw, right? So this one, I kind of put uh, dimensions to it. All right. I'm telling you, if you want to challenge yourself, you're like, hey, this year I'm all about challenging myself. I want to do some... You know, I want to get out of my comfort zone, all right? This is one where I would tell you to digitize because um, after you stitch it out, it looks very, very nice, all right? It looks very clean, and there's so many different ways to do it. All right, let's push play on this. Let me slow this down a bit. Look at that. That was the first round right here. All right, before I push play, oh, you can see how my vectors, when I did my vectors, Okay, you can see how I kind of outlined it. Uh, let me show the pictures. All right, you can kind of see how I broke down my image here. This is one where I would recommend you adding kind of like guides. You could either do the guides here or you could do it in um, Illustrator if, you, if you're an il il Illustrator user. All right, let me hide this. So. Bam. All right, so if you're looking at my right-hand side here where it says design information, this gives me a breakdown of everything that's happening, all right? Let me go big, big screen right here. All right, when we're talking about digitizing, uh, converting our files into embroidery, okay? There's a lot of questions we need, to, especially if, if we're sending this out to a digitizer, is we want to minimize cuts, all right? We want to we want to make sure because usually when the machine, something happens with the machine, a lot of times it happens during the, the cutting portion, okay? Um, so what I'm looking at here, that's why I like having this information open up, especially for... Uh, like embroidery heads that like really get into the details right get into the details of of uh the design right so you could see here 
stitches, 5,700 stitches, all right? Relatively low, not too crazy. Uh, two colors, yeah. Trims, that's the big one there, all right? That's always the big question you should always be asking. How many trims does this file have? Because if we're not careful, you can easily have 30 trims. And who wants to have a design with 30 trims? So here we have five trims. All right. And that's because some of the colors, they're overlapping each other. It's not like uh, the red goes all at once and then the gold goes all second. OK, so you'll kind of see that. So you'll kind of see that when I'm um, when I like to digitize, when I show files, I like to show that information right there. Right. Uh, you don't always see a lot of that information out online. All right. Uh, you can see here objects, 48 objects. That just means there's like 48 shapes and and um, lines that I used. All right. All right. Let's go back here. Let's push play. All right. Bam. So I start with his face. Right. I'm going to do a fill stitch. So right here, I'm doing it slow motion because I want to kind of tell you. I'll speed it up in a bit. I'll kind of walk you through kind of uh, show you what's kind of going through my mind when I'm digitizing this, okay? So here, I put a fill stitch. Of course, a sand stitch is not gonna work. Um, it's too long and it just wouldn't look right, okay? And you can see the stitch angle, okay? It's probably like at a 10, 10 degrees right there. Okay, it's just going from left to right, probably like at a 10 degree. Um, my underlay, of course, you always want to have underlay. Uh, here I have a tatami underlay. Usually, if you have a fill stitch tatami, you'll also you'll uh, you'll also have a tatami fill stitch. Sorry, not always, but usually that's the case. So I had an underlay with a tatami underlay. Uh, I mean, I had an edge, I had an edge run as an underlay, and then a tatami underlay. And now it's doing the fill stitch, aka the underlay. All right, now let's speed this up. Now it's going to walk on top and do the top portion. So right now, look, it's going to walk. Bam, it just walked up there. All right, so you use walking stitches to avoid cuts. Saves a lot of time, especially if you are knocking out projects. All right, every cut counts. All right, every cut counts. Then it's going to walk and do these little blades right here, all right? You see these little blades that are kind of hiding under? All right, I'm making them bigger than what they are just so, so they could overlap. That one's probably bigger than what it should have been. All right, then I have my first cut right here, all right? It cut, now it's gonna change to the next color, all right? So this is kind of bottom portion. Now it's going to do the shadow. So I'm just doing a full fill, and then in that little yellow part that's being covered, I'm going to put a sand stitch in that on top of that. All right. So I didn't want to make a hole in that area. I just make a straight. And you can see kind of how I'm breaking up his face, right? I'm um this is kind of giving it dimensions. So now it's this part. This is also a fill stitch. Okay, it's going from top to bottom, but it's kind of angled. So you could kind of see how it's changing its angle right here. You'll kind of see how I did that when I start digitizing. All right, so same thing. He walked up here, bam. Now he's going to do... The remaining part of his cheek. So this is kind of like the shadow portion. Bam. So same thing, right? Right now it's all fill stitches. Okay. And what we want to focus on is that we have enough overlap. Okay. Of course, this part we have more than enough overlap, but here with the yellow. Bam. And now it's going to walk. And start doing this part. It's like the, the blades of his helmet. Bam, right there. Look at that. All right, bam. Now it's going to do this main thing. So this main part is all in 
one sand stitch right here. All right, so here I'm showing you like the final product. So when I'm digitizing, you can kind of see why I'm doing certain items, right? So you can see, so this part kind of covers everything together. Bam, cut, all right? So there's our second cut right here. All right, so, so far, so good. Okay, everything is looking all right. Then we push play. And now it's gonna do the outside. All right, so here, this part, this front side of his face, I'm using a 1.5 millimeter sand stitch, kind of like the smallest size you want to go with um, long running stitch, long sand stitches or short sand stitches. Okay, corner, bang. All right, let's speed this up. And then once I'm kind of like out here on the outsides, I bumped it up to a two millimeter sand stitch and it's going to run up here all right there bang I'm gonna drop down it's going to finalize right there that's like the icing on the cake where it puts everything together bam look at that all right we're not over yet so that was what uh cut number three that was a third cut so now we're going to go into this detail bam and did that little mini detail right there four cuts and then this is the last one the nose mouth chin bam all right all right um i got the final stitch out oh actually i could probably show it right here let me see because my gopro i don't know my GoPro was acting up right now here in the light box. Let me see if I can show it to you right here. I don't know if it's going to be bright enough. Hold on. Give me a sec. All right. All right. I think we got it. Yep. Go on. All right. A couple, there's a couple uh, things that I want to fix. All right. I actually did fix it here. All right. It was on the two corners. You could probably see it. All right. Little, small, little, but not bad for a sample stitch out. All right. But usually when you're looking at your sample stitch outs, you're looking for gaps. All right. You see right here. It's kind of like bright right here. I kind of like moving it so you could kind of see the different angles. All right, you can see the blade, right? You can see like those little yellow details. Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. All right, a couple of changes, just. Right, that's that's the whole purpose for a stitch out, right? Is if we could come back, all right. So that's the big thing when we're um, digitizing, all right. Learning the rules when something doesn't look right, we can go back, okay. We can go back and kind of adjust things, all right. All right. Um, now, the reason why I showed you that first. The actual stitch out the stitch out is that way right now when i stitch it out when i digitize it if i'm doing something you kind of see the reason why i'm doing certain things all right let's dim this down okay um all right hello everybody see a lot of people in the house make sure you hit that like button let youtube let facebook okay we're on both channels right now YouTube and Facebook. Um, I think I'm gonna do a, oh, let's go back to this video right here. I think I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm gonna do it both on, on Facebook and YouTube. That way, you know, more people can see the classes. Um, make sure you hit like that, that way, 
the social channels, all right, they they kind of have an idea that from this 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 year, okay. Actually, it's going to be from now till the end of June, okay, where we're going to do these classes, all right. So I have, I already have uh, set up. It should be about twenty six classes, all right. We might have a bonus one on July first, but there's going to be twenty six classes. Uh, and each class is just going to get better and better and better and better, better, better. All right. And just as a FYI, I am celebrating. All right. This week we are celebrating four years on YouTube. All right? I cannot believe it's already been four years. All right. 20. Yeah. Four years. All right. So a lot of this information. OK. It's only going to get better and better and better, 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 better this year. Big focus on digitizing, all right? And one thing about embroidery, there's three levels of learning embroidery, all right? Three levels. Got to make sure if you're learning embroidery, you hit these three levels of learning, okay? Number one is you got to learn the theory side, right? The rules, kind of like what we're talking about right here, all right? You got to learn the theory side. You got to learn the actual stitch outs. Okay, when you're learning embroidery, you actually got to click and stitch. Okay, you can't, we can't just learn by watching. You got to actually go out there, do the clicking, do the stitching. All right, and then three, we got to learn from our stitches. All right, so we got to go back, make tweaks, and then go back to the drawing board and make stuff better and better and better and better. Because believe it or not, there is no such thing as the world's perfect digitized image, okay? Something can always be tweaked. Something can always be better, all right? And not just that, but if we if we change from garment to garment, if we go from a hat to a polo shirt, we might have to make little fine tuning adjustments, all right? And then let me, let me, good question, right? The book. All right, so I, I answered this question earlier, but definitely I might have to answer it three or four more times today. All right, the book is pretty much almost done. All right, it's almost done. It could have been done. I put a pause on it and I'm gonna make it better. All right, better than what it is. All right, so uh, thank you for being patient with me. All right, appreciate all that. All right. And then, uh, lessons will they be hey bar how you doing uh not saturday monday evenings all right monday evening monday 5 p.m eastern all right so this is episode number one okay and usually what i like to do uh if we have a class uh if we have a class uh i do want to go throughout the week and actually do projects based off the class that we just had so today we had um, today we're we're digitizing Tommy Trojan here. Uh, within the week, I'm gonna actually video record uh, the actual stitch out. All right, so I could put it either on a sample. I sampled one version out. Um, I'm gonna make little tweaks here and there, and then and then um, we could put it on hats and different stuff like that. All right, and then um, no, so. Central would be five, six, seven, seven central. So 5 p.m. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think I said that wrong earlier. 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. Sorry about that. Uh, all right, all right. Good stuff. All right, let's 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 start digitizing that. Let me see. We're good with time. All right. I don't know if anybody has a curfew today. All right. But I think we're, you know, usually, oh, let's go back right here. Usually to me, an hour of embroidery, it's like this, right? I don't, I don't want to, um, this class. All right. I, I do want to go back and, and chapter it, put like time codes to it. So if anybody goes back to it and checks certain thing, I do want to make sure we, uh, I time code it. That's what, that way, if you got to go back and see something, it's easily being done, but uh, our classes might, I've tried to keep it within an hour, hour and a half, but sometimes, 
right? Uh, when you start explaining little small details, time just goes by fast, all right? So we might go two hours, um, but the classes, they're here available after uh, after the live. They're available for replay, so you can always go back and watch them, all right? All right. Let's get started right here. All right, all right, all right. Okay. So, bang. So, first thing was the yellow, right? We did the yellow first. Now, I have all my tools right here on the left hand side. Okay. These are really the ones that, because here on, on Wilcom, Everything is adjustable. Like you could put, you could, I could remove all these tools up here and on my left, but this is kind of like what I use here, especially uh, this one, column A, column B, C. Then you can see here they have their shortcuts. So I'm usually with my left hand when I'm digitizing, my right hand is clicking and my left hand is hitting like hotkeys. All right. So you can see the hotkeys that I'm using. Um, these are the three main tools for digitizing, column A, column B, column C. Okay, and then we got these two, your complex turning, complex fill. And I'm going to I'm gonna touch all of these here. I'm going to use all of these so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, and then, we, of course, we have the walking stitch. All right, and then these, these three here are the same. So this one is like our our walk our this one run stitch closed shape and then our digitized columns. So these blue ones that are here are similar to these red ones up here. It's just like a newer version. These red ones are a newer version. All right. Um, all right. Let's go ahead. Let's start with. We could start with this one, complex feel which is the same as our digitized close shape. All right, let's do his face here. So you can see kind of, and you could kind of, so if we want to trace it perfect, right? You could trace it perfect, or you could either trace it perfect here, right? Or you can kind of, Take a step back and kind of run like a parallel one, like kind of off a bit, just for that push pull. Okay. So there's certain, there's different ways of doing things. All right. I'm just going to stitch it here. And then if I have to change anything, I could just pull certain nodes. All right. Then if you don't like a certain stitch, just push back space. All right, bam. And then here, you got to like pretend that there's a, uh, you got to pretend here that we, this, the outside yellow is just a um, sand stitch, bam. And bam, we can just go, okay. All right, so I actually had it selected for um, a run stitch, but you select it, you can just select this file. All right, we can change it into a run stitch. If you wanna put a, a sand stitch, you could do that. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to fields and we're gonna go to tatami here, bam, All right, H. Probably put it like 10%, not 10%, 10 degrees, right? And that just means it's going to move from like left to right, right? Set the colors. Bam. All right. Um, okay. Actually, what I'm going to do also, let me just do this right now. So I'm all about everybody here, all right? understanding learning it um learning it 
and not just learning it visual, but actually going in and um, and seeing the details. Uh, as soon as we're done with this live, I'm gonna put this file for download. Okay, and we'll put this. I'm gonna put this file free for download, so you could go in and replay it on yourself, uh, check, measure stuff, and and play with it. All right. Uh, it'll probably be up for like 24 hours. All right, so we'll put it up there. All right, FY. All right. All right. Now we did this. Of course, we got to look at our underlay. Uh, usually, I do all my underlay last. Like I put all my underlay for the very end. All right. But for the most part, if I'm working with tatami, all right, I'm putting an edge run. Okay. The edge run is gonna hold. It's gonna hold it in place. And then this is gonna secure it. The tatami, 135 degrees here. Bam. All right. And that's what this looks like right here. All right. Did the edge run first? The Tommy one, and it's running 135 degrees perpendicular to it. Bam. All right. All right. We do a walking stitch. Bam. To the next spot. All right. So nothing too crazy so far. Here, we could use complex turning all right so you can see here where it says it has a breakdown of what it does digitize field shapes with turning stitches all right it's one of my favorite ones that i like because the angles actually change all right the angles change so we don't have one set angle all right so let me show you what i'm talking about here so it's gonna say, put your angle. So I want this angle to run this way. I want this one to run this way, and then this one to run this way. Bam, look at that, all right? So my stitches kind of have like that angle. So it's kind of like angled like a sand stitch, but it's not a sand stitch. All right. It's giving it some formation here, all right? Then we can walk, right? Bam, we want to walk to this part here. And then, so we have that, uh, we have so many options to choose from, from our tools, right? Usually, usually you have like the tool that you like to use, okay? I like to use the column B, that one's my favorite one. So we just need a sand stitch to cover. This yellow part, actually it's gonna be like this. Right? So it's gonna cover like that part of the, all right? But in order to know exactly how much yellow I need, let me do this red portion of the helmet. So I'm gonna hide this, let's hide this for later. Let's do this portion here. Let's unhide these vectors. All right, so I could just use it to digitize this. And let's go back. Let's do the sharp images right here. So let's start with this first one. All right, so usually when you're gonna do these sand stitches, I wanna go behind this blue line, this vector line that I created, all right? Let me go the other way. So it's gonna go this way. But I do want to show you something that's important here. All right, so this is like our first blade right here, all right? But let's make this, bam, right here, all right? Now here, we traced it perfect, right? Like it perfectly matches, but we actually don't want that because if we do this, by the time we do both of these, what's gonna happen, they're gonna close up on us. So if we put it like perfectly here and then put this one perfectly there, So if we, if we do this here, okay, here it looks good on the screen, but in reality, these, these sand stitches, they're gonna close on us like this. This is actually gonna close, it's gonna push this way with the push pull, 
and then this one h is going to push pull right so at the vine the final stitch out is going to look like this right so we're not going to get that image there so what we want okay we want to push back a bit so pull these select these pull them back a bit all right always anticipating that push pull all right so by the time it parts itself this is going to kind of come here and we can either go a little we can also go a little bit more back you can always over exaggerate stuff in embroidery because by the time everything lays flat it's going to kind of work itself in Then you can just angle this part up. I create that V H. All right, bam. Start looking like this. H. All right, so we want to leave that gap right there. And then same thing. So it's just a lot of rinse, rinse and repeat. That's all embroidery is. And then, and like I said earlier, I am gonna go back. I'm gonna look at a lot of questions. I know we are getting questions here. Um, but it's kind of hard to look back and forth here. So I do want to start making videos where I'm just answering the questions. All right. All right. So here, um, I don't want to cut here. So I'm going to make a walking stitch here. All right. But just put them in order. So in order to put these in order, you go one, two, select this little line here, three, four, and then push that sequence number. Then you could always put a apply closest joint and everything disappears. All right. That's the big one there. I think that's the biggest challenge in embroidery for me is minimizing cuts. All right. Um, anytime we can minimize cuts is a good day. All right. Especially if I get a file back and it has a cut that really didn't have to be there. All right. It's kind of like, makes my blood boil a bit but that's why it's good to have software that you could uh that's why it's good to have software that you can edit because no matter what like digitizers they're gonna miss things you know what I'm saying like they're not perfect people like they got a thousand things that they're doing all right man we got this right here and now you can make this put this side first and just follow our so the column b you just do one side first all right then you do the next side and then after i do that side uh, i'm going to set the stitch angles so I'm just going to go here. All right, that's going to cover. That's going to cover. And then, like right here, it looks all weird looking. Control H to reshape and just set our stitch angles. All right, you kind of could anticipate how your stitch angle should be. Bang. Look at that. Bang. Then put apply close to joint. This should have apply close to joint. All right. Let's see where these cuts are coming from. All right. So when it stops, you can you kind of tell where it stops. All right. Bam. So 
uh, hide all. All right, so so far we got this right here. Bam. So right now it's not in order, right? Because it's gonna kind of go. Um, yeah. So now. Uh, Let's do, bam, back to turning stitches. So, just do this red portion. Yep. So that's like the big one there is just these turning stitches kind of give it character a bit. All right. And then we do this same thing. Oh. Then kind of like the eyes area or the visor area. Angles, bam. Look at that. All right. So the easy way would have just made one big fill stitch, but we want to give him kind of like some character here. And then we just continue. All right. So if if you went ahead and and created your, like your vectors, all right. A lot of it is just you're just tracing right over it. Then our angles right here. Okay. Yep, bam. All right. And I'm doing this in reverse because I first, uh, uh, in reality, I'm going to do this neck part. I'm going to stitch the neck first. But we can always go back and fix the, the sequence. All right. I'm going like super fast. Usually taking my time, usually. I think it's what I noticed is that it's different. Just kind of digitizing with it's kind of like on your own. Bumping music, All right? Here I'm just gonna put one stitch angle. Bam. All right, now let's put this in order so we could go one, put these glasses, this one, then this one, finalize it with that, three. All right, since we got it kind of going in different places, we could put uh, our walking stitches from here to here, here to here, and then fix our sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six. Resequence this. All right, now it's in order. And then apply close to joint, and then they should kind of fix itself right there. All right, so we are kind of getting there. All right, we are getting there. 
Uh, big thing here, kind of what I want to show you. Let me see. All right, what I want to show you right here. Uh, all right, what I want to show you here is this outer, the outer um, sand stitch, all right? So what we can do is hide all this stuff, hide. All right, just to give us some space right here. Um, so this one, column C, right? Column C is the steel stitch, and just gonna make everything our sand, our our sand stitches even. Okay. Um, what I can do, because I know this front side, like the front of his face, a lot of stuff is happening right here. So I don't want to do it all in one shot. I'm gonna have to break it up into pieces. Okay, but these these that are kind of like longer and wider, a little easier. These corners, usually corners, uh, I could break them up into pieces just so I could have the the capping here on this corner. Okay. Um, but let's start up here. We can start like at this corner here. Bam, bam. Actually, let me rewind. I'm gonna put it at two millimeters. Okay, centered. Let's put it this gold here. Oh. Let's go back to two gold underlay zero. I just put a center. All right. Bam. All right. I'm gonna kind of. Show you this one here and kind of put a pause to it so I could talk about the design. But let me show you this here, all right? So the steel stitch, put that corner here and then keep on going there. All right, let me just stop it here. We could keep on going, all right? But let me just show you here. So here I made a, a pretty nice corner here. All right. Um, on my sample, I had I had cut this up here. You could you could kind of cut this up. Like let's say this this wasn't working for you. Okay. This kind of this one here actually works pretty good. All right. Uh, sometimes you kind of experiment with different kind of uh, corners, but you could cut this. All right, bam. What did it cut? Cut something else. All right, hold on. Let, let's rewind this. Bam. Oh, I see what happened. All right. Cut. You're going to cut like this corner right here. All right, this is just some situations where you could do this, all right, where you would just create, let's say like there's a specific size that you need for a corner. All right, you could just kind of create your corner right there. Oh, I see what happened. Unhide all. All right, but in this case, that corner was pretty good. Actually, I'm gonna actually in the, in the design, I'm actually going to keep this corner right here, okay? Because I was kind of playing around with it here. All right. This one's actually a good one. This is the one that I fixed. All right. Messing with corners. All right. Yeah, that one's good. All right. So here, just hide all this. Unhide all. Hide others. All right. You kind of see how I, uh, how I used it. Oh, let's, let me show you one last thing here. So here, if we ever have to edit, because usually you can't really edit a steel stitch, okay, unless we do this. So let's hide others. So here, H. So usually if we want to edit it, 
you could edit like the the width of it, right? But everything happens at the same time. But if you ever have to edit it like individually, like let's say we want to make this part come in a little narrower, then we could just break apart, select it H. Now we can like control pieces of it. All right. Sometimes that's useful, like when you want to get out of the this this steel portion. All right, bang. So let's look at this one here. And then this front side, all right, the front side of his face. I kind of broke it up just so I wouldn't have uh, kind of some weird angles happening here. Okay, but you can kind of see how it follows the silhouette of his face. So let's see. Bam. Okay, so it did, it did this little small portion here. So instead of having like sharp turns here, I just have like bam, pivots, goes down, then it pivots. And these are rounded, so we're good here. Okay, and then here it goes back to its long form. All right, bam. Unhide all. All right, then we get that. All right. So let me show you again. The image here. All right. So you can kind of see the outline of it. All right. Especially if we're looking at the front of his face. All right. Very subtle. The front where his nose is at. Let me see it before. All right, if we if we look at in front of his nose, let me. I'm trying to get you a good angle right here. All right, that sand stitch is at a 1.5 millimeters. All right, so that's kind of like the lowest I go, just because I didn't want too much stuff happening in front of his face. All right, but the ones on top of the helmet, that's at a uh, two millimeter all right so very relatively small thin but it really makes the design pop out all right so you could see here you kind of get a good angle right here all right so my main my main takeaway okay my main takeaway today and something that i really want to focus all right, as we get deeper, we're going to have the same concept, but with more complicated design, such as um, 3D Puff, okay? There's going to be 3D time with 3D Puff where we have to break up the object, okay? Where we're going to have to break it up into pieces because our sand stitches just can't. It's It won't it either, it's too long or it just won't look right, okay? So there's times where, here, we got to break it up into pieces to give it form, to give it a foundation and just uh, a three-dimensional um, look into it, okay? So you can kind of see it here in the software, all right? Like this, this image, it doesn't, it doesn't do pit, it doesn't do justice on the actual stitch out like when i'm looking at the actual stitch out okay so that's why i'm gonna put it up right now as a free download all right so you could stitch it out so you could see and one thing that i like to do when i stitch it out i like to like hover over the embroidery machine and kind of see how much got how much overlap got overlapped right that way, if anything has, because there's sometimes where you'll have a gap and it's not even an overlap issue. It's just the angles uh, that they're stitching in. All right. So I'm going to put, look out for that right here. All right. Um, and then I'll, I'll film uh, the actual stitch out. All right. I'll probably do that in the morning just because I got a couple of things I got to do tonight. All right. But. Let me see if there's any questions here. All right, bam, bam. 
Let me start from the top right here. All right, bam, bam. All right, Flip66, how you doing? Here digitizing from Cali to Vegas. I, hard to find everything at spot. All right, good luck. Over in Vegas. All right. GMG in the house. Yup, back. So every Monday, remember every Monday we're going live. Right, live, live. Uh, the only time I'm not going to be live, uh, if I'm working that day, okay. If I, and when I'm talking about work, it's because I have duty. All right, like I have to uh, sleep on the ship. All right. So some of you already know I'm in the Navy, so we have something called duty. And when you have duty, you're pretty much working 24 hours for that day. All right, you're on. You're we're we're on the ship 24 hours. All right. So if when I do have duty, uh, I'll either have a video to put out or I'll go live on Tuesday or on that Sunday, maybe on that Sunday. All right. I'm still thinking about the, I got a couple of weeks to think about it, how I'm going to when I cross that road or that when I cross that bridge, figure that out right there. All right. Um. Bam, bam. Let me see. Bam. A lot of happy New Year's. All right. Um, so when I put down this file for to digitize, I'm also going to put the image just in case you want to digitize it. But I'm telling you, this image here, if you want to work on your push-pull compensations, if you want to work on your overlapping, if you want to work on your sequence, on your trims, on your runs, this is the file right here, okay? If you if you digitize this file, I'm telling you, you're going to be a whole lot better. It's gonna, you're going to be like a couple, three steps ahead from where you were at before, all right? Kind of try to, I, I wanted to start with a challenging one, all right? A challenging uh, file. And the reason why I say challenging, because there's so many ways to do it. Okay, there is a very simple, easy, super easy. I can do this in five minutes. And then there's the more complicated. Give me a minute. Give me like an hour to to do my version. If it works, great. If not, I'm going to have to tweak some stuff up. All right. Um, And then Mar, Mar Fred, what's up? You have any videos of you hooping, embroidering on the backside of caps? Yep. Somewhere in the in the in the catalog. Okay. Uh, there is one. All right, hats. Just probably Romero threads. Probably search Romero threads. Uh, back of hats. Okay, I have that video where I do like four sides of a hat. Uh. Jesse in the house. What's up, Jesse Gibson? Marisa. All right. We got everybody's in here. Kingsbury. We got Barb. We got T-Town. All right. It's good to see everybody in the house. All right. So many people. I'm kind of like scrolling down. Uh, all right. This is a good one. I like this question right here. Juan Garcia de Jesus, hey, I do a test, 11 mil. Okay, so that's what I'm saying, right? I was saying that uh, the maximum length, right? Once you once you go beyond 10 millimeters in sand stitches, okay, you're in no man's land. You better know what you're doing because your machine might start talking to you, all right? When you, when, when you do that uh, long stitch at 11, okay, it's like extending itself. So you're going to hear that click. The machine's gonna like slow down to a crawl and do that like clack 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 clack. All right. First time it happened to me, like I freaked out. I was like, oh man, I broke my machine. All right. That's just your machine telling you, like, hey, 
you better know what you're doing because I'm kind of like taking this to the extreme. All right. So yeah, once you get to that, those hand stitches, because usually you're probably like uh, some, some embroidery machines is like 11.6 or 12.6. Okay. Uh, you'll be good. All right. It's, it's all right. I've done a couple of designs where it's done that sound. Right. Uh, I just, me personally, I wouldn't recommend doing like big hundred piece job with that type of uh, embroidery because you could always take you could always take everything to the extreme right it's like our hats you could take it all the way to a 3.2 in height but sometimes you don't want to do that right because hats take a beating your machine takes a beating sometimes not it's not worth it uh putting all your equipment to the max okay like sometimes you don't have to run your machine all the way to the maximum speed all right because if something happens to it, right, you're you're the one who has to fix it, right? So, and then, yep, Barb came right behind and said, hey, the widest stitch, right? It's like the safe stitch, eight millimeters, nine, ten. Hey, you're kind of getting into the, into the red zone over there. And then um, we see... Hey, Roma, can you make it a little easier for me to enlarge and highlight your curse? All right. I got to figure out how to do that on my computer. All right. Um, uh, I was trying to find a setting to do that. All right. I'll Google that this week, how to make it easier and have that highlighted cursor there. All right. I just don't want to add any software to my equipment where if it's something that I could just do, like, you know, like a setting, that'd be all good. So I'm going to look. Thanks for that question. Um, Charita border would be saying I would fill stitch the red portion. All right, yep, kind of like how I did it. Border would be sand, yep. So you kind of like exactly like how I did it because I did the border, the border sand stitches, and then this bottom red part I did fill stitches. All right, and then I broke up the helmet right there. And then uh, Sandy, I'm using Wilcom 4.5. All right. And then some videos. Be on the lookout. My upcoming videos. Okay. Um, I have the impressions video. We're going to go down. Um, we're going to talk about all the vendors that are going to be there specifically for embroidery. Uh, people you want to talk to. People that I'm excited to talk to. Um, and just remember, when I come back, I'm going to come back with a lot of information. So if you do have questions on certain equipment or any, or any company, let me know, and I'll be sure to get that question asked when I'm there. All right. Uh, Crafty Puerto Rican in the house. All right. Thanks for uh, visiting, Evelyn. All right. Demps Design. Yep, we're going to have the replay right here. Sunrise Tactical, right? It's good to see everybody here. Uh, first day, I'm going to always go back to these shows and kind of uh, see how we can make it better, right? So always, if, if you have any questions, any way to make it better. All right. Um, and this is the big one here, right? So I appreciate this Sunrise Tactical gear. I really like the sculpture look and embroider so much. Okay, so that's the main takeaway. When I was saying that, the takeaway for today's show, okay, that was the perfect word right there is the sculptured look. All right, it gives it a sculptured look. All right, so instead of having just a regular feel, right, boring feel, look at how many dimensions we have here. Okay, we have like the helmet. You could tell the helmet's its own. His face, his jawline, right? His jawline is kind of standing out. Okay, his visor. Look at that visor standing out. Okay. Yep, that was the word I was looking for. Sculpture. That's how it looks. All right. Um, and then let's see right here. Kane. Comparison, how would you digitize for cat versus pol polo polyester? Okay, so usually polos, you want it to be real light, 
you want it to be uh you don't want it to be too heavy uh if we do go heavy sometimes once we start adding a lot of these fills especially with the uh, angled fill this one that i used the uh, complex turning okay you might be getting more pull uh either i might have to think about my underlay i mean my stabilizer making sure the stabilizer is all right for the most part if it's not puff I'm not changing too much. I'm not doing too many changes. Uh, sizing should be the same. Uh, underlay, okay, uh, should be the same. Uh, a lot of it would be testing, just to see the testing of it. Uh, just uh, focusing on the puckering, making sure I don't have a lot of puckering. If I am getting a lot of puckering, I would probably hold back on the amount of um, turning stitches. Because sometimes turning stitches, uh, likes to pull fabric. So that's maybe something I would think about. All right. But of course, I would always test it out and then make a judgment based off the test. Um, and then this is a good question right here, TMG Design. Uh, if we were to increase this to a 3.5, so let's say we go 3.5. This is the big one here, right? So my, in here in this stitching, somewhere here, it's telling me I have a maximum stitch of 9.8 millimeters. So I'm kind of getting in the big side. If I was to increase this to a 3.5, pretty big. Bang. All right. Really what you want to focus, a lot of the, uh, the smaller parts, there's really no biggie. Okay, well, we're going to focus is this here, because this is like where my big, my big portion is. So you want to look at the maximums. Look at that. That's 15 millimeters of that sand stitch. So we're going to, we, the way it is right now, we can't, we can't do it. Okay, we would have to make some adjustments. We could probably um, just change this to a, which probably won't look that good, but we could probably change it into a fill stitch. Okay, probably keep these, right? That's, this is probably the big one here, is turning this into a fill stitch. Okay, once we do that, then we should be good. Look, maximum stitch, 8.8. .8. We undo that, 12.7 here. All right, so that would probably just be my only change. Other than that, everything should be all right. All right, I might actually um, stitch that out like that. Put it in the back of the door. I have like a, a soft velvet back here where I'm gonna start putting patches in the back of the door. Okay, right now it's fresh. I just put it on today. So I'm still kind of organizing this, uh, the workstation here. All right, so look out for that. All right, so that was a good question right there. All right, changes to underlay? Uh, probably not. Probably not to that big because that already has good underlay. Um, bam, bam. Okay, and then uh, the link. I'm going to put this file for download. Just give me like a bit. If it's not later tonight, it'll be by tomorrow morning, but it'll be on this in the description here in uh, YouTube and Facebook. I got to remember that I'm, I'm going live on Facebook too. Can I send you files to digitize? Uh, so I don't digitize. I only digitize for in-house projects, like projects that I'm working on. All right, so I think we're good here. All right. Bam. All right. So let me see. One hour, 40 minutes. All right. I think we did good. Uh, good information today. Okay. Uh, a lot of like what, what can be done, what can be done, what should be done. All right. Um, we're going to do a lot of testing. 
a lot of experimenting, see what works, see what doesn't work. Um, I'm going to just try to have as many files for you to actually stitch out because, like I said earlier, we need the three methods to learn. Okay, the, the theory, learning information. Okay, somebody telling you what to do. Like, hey, this, 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 and that. Okay, it's all good, right? But you need to see it in action. You actually have to go out. You got to start clicking. Okay, so I'm challenging everybody. Go out, digitize this, your version, right? If you want to start with a very basic version, start with that and then slowly work your way up. Say, hey, I can make it better. I can make it, I can make it. How about if I do this? How about if I do that? All right, the same way we made it bigger, the same way we, we put it on a polo, on a shirt. Test everything, all right? This year, that's all we're doing is testing, 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 see what works, what doesn't work, okay? Um, that's kind of like my goal on this channel here is testing and everything that I test, everything that I come up with, all right? I'm sharing it with everybody here on the channel, all right? And vice versa. If you learn something, if there's something that you learn, uh, you can share it, right? You can always share it with other people. Um uh, I'm always open to learn different ways of doing things, all right? Sometimes we're kind of stuck in our ways, and it's either this way or no way, but always if there, if you have a, a different way of doing things and you feel like it's better, I'm always open to suggestions, okay? Um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to chop up these. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to categorize and uh, bookmark. Okay, here on YouTube, I could bookmark it. So if you go back, um, you kind of see where uh, uh, specific topics of what we're talking about. All right. I want to thank everybody for stopping by. Happy New Year's, everybody. Hit that like. Make YouTube, Facebook know that we are in the house every Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. All right. See you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.